first scriptures on the screen tonight will be uh, Romans 5, 17. 5, 17 up on the board. <coughs> Excuse me. The name of this uh, teaching tonight is a new perspective, who we are in Christ. A new perspective. We have to begin to see ourselves as God sees us. Now that we're his children, we have to see ourselves. Now, this, that, that, that's a, a renewing of the mind that will be transformed as we begin to see ourselves as God sees us. Okay? Now, let's read that. This is an Amplified. For if because of one man's trespass, which we know is Adam, lapse, offense, death reign through that one, that is through Adam, death reign through every man, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, if, you've, if you have received God's overflowing grace, raise your hand. Yes, you have. You're a child of God, Un, which is unmerited favor. Uh, we didn't deserve it, but it's a free gift of righteousness, putting them, putting us into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, I'm using myself as an example. I'm reigning through Christ, okay? If you're reigning through Christ, raise your hands, okay? Very good. Doesn't mean, forget about your problems. In the world, you will have problems. But cheer up, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. So we got to see our new identification who we are in Christ. We're no more slaves in the book of Galatians. Paul tells the Galatians that. But we are sons and daughters of the living God. Now, your perceptive, you've got to perceive that and get that new mindset. Gosh, I'm a son of God. Now, that's strange, isn't it? To think of yourself as a son of God because you go out there in our society and you come to somebody and say, glad to meet you, I'm, I'm the son of God. <laughs> we'll come down to the jail and see you or, 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 or the hospital, the insane solid, they'll put you. But that's who we are in Christ. That's our new identification. We didn't do it. God did it for us. He adopted us into his family. He chose us, the Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, before the foundation of the world, he chose us to be his children. He adopted us into his family. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and brought us into his family. Now, we had to accept that by faith. Everything from beginning to end is by faith. Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 17 tells us that. So tonight, you've got to see, I want you to see yourself as a child of God. I want you to see yourself as an overcoming, an overcomer. Okay, because the devil is going to do everything he can to keep you down and tell you you are not an overcomer. So he, we do have an enemy in this world, and it is Satan, and we have to remember that. All right, go to our next, our next uh, verse there, 18, verse 18, and we'll get started on this teaching tonight. Romans 5, 17. I'm sorry, 18. You're right. You're on. Thank you. Well, then, as one man's trespass, and who is that one man? Adam, always identify. One man's false step and falling away led to condemnation for all men. So one man's act of righteousness. Now, who is that one man's act of righteousness? Jesus. Leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. So by one man's sins, all the people, all of us at one time, was born as sinners. So we come along in life. God is so gracious by his Holy Spirit. He reveals to us our condition that it's not really our sins. Let me put it this way. It's. The reason a sinner sins is because he's a sinner. Is that not true? You understand that? 
And where did he get that sin principle? From Adam. So he sins because he's a sinner. What else can a sinner do but sin? Now that doesn't mean as we as doesn't mean as we as Christians cannot sin. We can sin anytime we want to. But how many wants to sin? Let me see your hands. We don't want to sin. But that little word, if, 1 John 1, 9, if you do sin, God is, if you confess it, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Case closed. Now you just keep on going. I don't wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I'm going to sin three times. Now here's what you've got to watch out for. The enemy will accuse you. He's the accuser, accuser of the brother. Satan is. He accuse you that you are sinning and you walk around with condemnation all day long. Anybody experience that? Sure, let's be honest, all of us. If you're walking in God, that's just the way it works for all of us. And then you've got to recognize that and rebuke that and overcome that how? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And what is your testimony? The blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me from all sin. And rebuke that spirit of condemnation. Because you ain't going nowhere with that spirit of condemnation on you. And then what happens is when people talk to you, you go, rawr, 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 rawr. you growl. Come on, how many you know what I'm talking about? You see, you don't, a lot of Christians don't understand it's because of that pressure of condemnation upon you that makes you feel bad. So you have to understand that. But now getting back to our first scripture, God has given us what? The gift of righteousness. And what else? Unmerited favor. What is that? Grace. To reign in this life, that means reign over Satan's accusations, reign over whatever he accuses us. He, he does his job. That's his job, to accuse us before God. You all remember the story of Job? I mean, remember the story of Job. Okay, I don't need to go into it then. <coughs> All right, let's go to the next scripture now, 19. 19. For just as by one man's disobedience, who was Adam, we've identified him, failing to hear heedlessness and carelessness, the many were constituted sinners. That's what we used to be. We were constituted as sinners because we were on this side of the cross. Okay? But then we found out we were sinners and we accepted Christ. If I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised him to the dead, thy shall be saved. So here we go through the cross. And who else dies at the cross? We do. We died with Christ. All right? Then we come out on this side now as justified acquitted sons and daughters of the living God. Okay, you got to see that. Now we're on this side of the cross. So when you read the Bible, don't be putting what the Bible's talking about when we were over here. How many of you understand that? Rightly dividing the word of truth. At one time we were sinners. All right, let's finish this and I'll show you. Uh, <clears throat> so by one man's obedience, and who is that by that one man? obedience, the many will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with God. Now isn't it something we have been so grounded, and I say we the church, and I'm not an evil man, I, I don't have any axe to grind, but I've been around for a long time, been preaching for 50 some years, but you know that first part? How many of you still see yourself like that? Not anymore since you've been under the preaching here at the Shield. You understand that? Come on now. We, and, what, and what happens when you see, like, I'm just an old sinner. I'm just a worm in the cabbage patch. You ain't going nowhere. You're not going to reign and rule. I said you're not going to reign and rule. Perspective. Perspective. We have to see ourselves as God sees us. How does God see us now? See us now. Does he see us on that first part of sinners, or does he see us on the bottom part of that scripture? Somebody tell me, bottom. bottom. All right. But how do you see yourself? Be honest now. God knows. I know. Uh, but how about used to? Over the many years that we have walked, 
mostly the top part. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, that's true. I say that's true. And we, that's why we haven't grown to mature, because how can a, how can a worm in a cabbage, cabbage patch grow? No, we're not sinners no more. We are saints. Someone says, how can you say that, Bob? Because it does, it does, it does not count on my, my um, manner of living. Okay? Now, we're not talking about wait, the matter of living. We're talking about before God Almighty, God sees us totally as saints. Remember, on this side of the cross, we were sinners. But God made us saints, and now we're on this side. So we're not on the first part of that. Yeah, Adam did that to us because Adam fell. He sinned. That sin came down into our DNA all the way down and then the gospel was preached. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We accept Him as Lord and Savior and what He did for us at Calvary. We pass through the cross. Our old spirit that was dead died with Christ, and we come out on this side with a recreated spirit, not an not a overhaul spirit, but a brand new recreated spirit. And now we're saints of God. Okay? All right. It's very important we see that. Now, when you go back to the garden, <coughs> Adam's spirit was alive, and God and Adam's spirit was able to fellowship. How many is too hot in here? How many is too cold? I mean, it's too hot. <laughs> Jimmy cut off just a little bit. Now, when Adam and Eve, when Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve, but when Adam and, and, and when God and Adam fellowship, they fellowshiped in the spirit. But when Adam fell, that relationship with God, when you read the scriptures, yes, Jesus died for our sins, but he died to bring us back to God the Father. That's in the Scriptures. I don't have time to share all the Scriptures. I wish we did. But you guys have got to get up in the morning and go to work. So you've got to just hear me, write it down, and check it out. Ask questions later. Shoot first and ask questions later, okay? <laughs> so they commune in the Spirit, but when Adam sinned, that relationship between God and Adam was broken, and there was a big gulf there. And God had a plan. He knew it was going to happen from the very beginning, but he had planned it to, to bring us back across that gulf and where Christ could die on the cross, set us free, and now we come back to the Father. Now we can go to the very throne of God ourselves to receive the help and grace in time of need. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. I mean, just think about it. The Old Testament could not go to the Holy of Holies. They couldn't even get through the curtain. But when Christ died on that cross, that curtain was split from top to bottom. Not only can we go in, but God can come out now. God has come out. Sometimes I think, well, was it for us to come in? No. Christ came out, and now our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Christ lives in us, which is our only hope of glory. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes to the Father except through Him. That's just the way it is. If there's any other way we could have been saved, I think God's got a lot of intelligence. I mean, after all, He created all we see. But He made a way, and, and we know what the way is through Christ. So some people think, well, you know, through church membership, or I belong to uh, whatever and whatever, you know, all that may be good, but it don't buy your ticket to heaven. Christ is the Savior of the world. And all of us, I don't care who we are, have to come through Him to get to the Father. But we have accepted that, and therefore Christ has brought us to the throne, to the Father, and we can have fellowship with Him every day. I encourage Christians, and I know you do, but I'm here to encourage me, you, all of us, to spend time in that communion with God every day. Just stop and just... You don't have to, you just commune with him in your spirit. 
Because when God speaks to you, he'll speak to you in your spirit. He goes spirit to spirit. Intellect to intellect, flesh to flesh, spirit to spirit. I could talk with a certain person and tell you that they're coming to me by their intellect. Uh, have you grown to that point? Well, you're growing. But you will grow and you realize what's flowing out of that man, out of his mouth, is intellect, 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 intellect. Then there are those that's flesh, 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 flesh. Then there are those that are spirit, spirit, and now you feel at home with that person. This guy came in the night, I can tell you, the spirit. How many discerned the spirit, huh? Yeah, you did, can, because we're spirit beings, and we can discern. Hallelujah! We can discern that, a spiritual man. The Bible says in, in this, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, that I think it's chapter 2 or 3, that the spirit man concerns and discerns all things by our spirit. Sometimes I say, God, why do you show me these things about somebody? I, <laughs> we can, I can't change them. Yeah, but pray for them. <laughs> yeah, anybody understand that besides me? Yeah, I want, so I just pray for folks. Okay, now, we're talking about a new perspective, and, and that new perspective. How do we see ourselves now that we're born again? In our mind, in our spirit. Now, that is so important to get our minds renewed, to see ourselves as God sees us. How many of you know God counts those things that be not as though they were? That's why if you're going to overcome anything, I, I don't care what it is, it's the same principle. Uh, let's say you, anger. you got a lot of anger in you. I had a lot of anger in my earlier days as a Christian. And I overcome that by the Word of God. I'm dead indeed unto anger, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. I activated the Word of God, I spoke the Word of God, I sent the Word of God, the Holy Spirit was activated by me sending the Word of God, God watches over His Word to perform it, but if we don't say His Word, how can He perform it? He sent His Word to heal them. So if you've got a problem, that's why to know the Word of God. I died with Christ 2,000 years ago. I do not yield my members as in, well, have I done that? Since, yeah, I've done it. But I'm telling you, the more I understand it, the more I accept it by faith, the more I speak it, the more I confess it, the Holy Spirit uh, makes it more real, more real, more real, and the anger gets less, less, and less, and less, and God's Holy Spirit gets uh, stronger, stronger, and stronger. You know, so it's like, it's like uh, the, uh, the two dogs that was fighting. And the Indian uh, young man said to his grandfather, Grandfather, which one is going to win this, this fight? Which dog? He says, the dog that I've been feeding. So the part that we feed is going to be the stronger. If you feed your flesh, your flesh is going to be stronger. But if you feed your spirit with spirit, which is the word of God, my spirit, my word is spirit and truth, you feed that each day. Every day you need to eat of the word. You need to drink of the word. When I used to have to work, I carried my little Bible. When I, we, we used to have smoke breaks. I, I retarded the air base back in 1983. We had 15-minute smoke breaks. When I conquered smoking, and I had to uh, conquer smoking after I became a Christian, which I did by reckoning upon it was done already for me at the cross, and I counted it already done and, start, and just blowing smoke. Thank God I'm dead indeed under these old cigarettes. Hallelujah. See, that don't make sense. It's not sense, it's faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is through faith from beginning to end. You conquer by faith. It is through faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You read this scripture, it's faith, 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 faith. Just underline faith with a black marker or a, a, a blue marker. And your body, your, your Bible will be so marked up with blue <laughs> faith <laughs> read hebrews 11 the patriots of faith and some of them didn't get it in this life but they'll get it in the life hereafter okay now let's move here the time is going by fast <coughs> excuse me um, i want to turn to um 
Praise God. Turn to Luke 4, 16 on the board. Luke 4, 16. This is a powerful scripture. And you'll see this principle all through the Word of God. Okay? Luke 4, let's start with verse 16. I wish I had time to read all of this. Okay, we know that. So he came, he, who's that? Capital H, that's Jesus. Remember, capital H? Jesus, right? Okay, or God, always a capital. So he came to Nazareth, that Nazareth, that Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he entered the synagogue, as was his custom, on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. Now, we know he read Isaiah. I mean, remember that. I, can't go, I wish we had the time to really go through it, but I, I got so much I want to share. Now, I want you to think about perspective. When you start reading that, that, that story about him coming back to his hometown, and he got up in the synagogue, and he read and said, the, the anointing of the Lord is upon me, and he read Isaiah, and this day, this scripture is fulfilled, really, by me, say, if Jesus. And they thought, well, those are wonderful words. And then they, in verse 22, uh, put 22 up there, at that, of Luke 4, 22, and all spoke well of him, that is all, all of these people that he grew up with. Now, think about it, he's at home, he's in his home synagogue, his home church, all the people knew him, they watched him grow up, now he's 30 uh, years old, he goes into the synagogue, he opens Isaiah, and he reads it, and here's what they said. And all spoke well of him, and marveled at the words of grace that come forth from his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Now notice the pers perspective. Perspect yep, I'll get it. Perspective that they had. Now the next verse, read the next verse. Verse 23, there we go. So he said to them, you will doubtless quote to me this proverb, position, heal yourself. All right, he goes on down through that. And uh, this here, do also in your own town, they want them. But let's, let's move on down here. And um, I want to go to, uh, well, we know that a prophet is not honored. Elijah said that. All right, here's where we want to go, all the way down. Verse 28 now, verse 28, 428. I'm moving fast because I'm, I'm basically giving you a principle that you need to understand how important it is to see things as they really are. Not your old perspective. Their old perspective was he's the son of Joseph and Mary, his earthly father and mother. That was their perspective. We've seen him grow up. That was their perspective. But how many of you know, we know he was what? Jesus, the Son of God. But they didn't perceive that. Notice what it says, 28. When they heard these things, all of the people in the synagogues were filled with praise. <laughs> how many of you think they had a wrong perspective of who Jesus was? Can you see that? All right, very important you see that, and you'll see that all through the Scriptures, that principle of not seeing things clearly as God sees it and as they really are. So you may have to change some of our thinking as we get through the Word of God and understand the Word of God, because as you see, or you put it down as, or let's say it this way, your perspective and how you perceive something is going to cause you to act accordingly. Somebody's got a gun. What are you going to perceive? He's going to shoot me. But he's got a gun to shoot the person that's going to shoot you. But you perceive that he's going to shoot you, so you draw your gun and shoot the guy that's going to shoot the guy that's going to shoot you. <laughs> and you... <laughs> You shoot the guy, listen, you shoot the guy that's going to save you. And they shot the guy that came to save them because of their perspective. How many understand where I'm getting at? And I'm going fast because I've got a lot to share. <clears throat> so you check that every day. How do you see one another? 
Oh, now you're meddling, Pastor Bob. Well, let's check that out. How do, how do you see your husband? <laughs> Some of you are laughing. <laughs> Very important. Who does he think he is? Telling me my earplug has just fell out. Where's it at? Oh, it's on the floor. <laughs> How do you see me? We won't go into that. <laughs> you know I love you regards how you see me. See, I don't have to forgive you because I've already forgiven. I stay forgiven. All right, there we go. Got my earplug in now. I can hear what you've been saying now. Aha, uh -huh, I got you now. All right. <laughs> How many understand where I'm going here? Okay, I, I want us to get that principle down because we've got to make sure that we perceive things in the right way. Because if we don't, we're going to act on how we perceive that particular thing. If I perceive that you're against me, the chances are I don't want to get around you. Are, you. are you there? If people of the world perceive that God is against them, that's why they're running from God. God ain't against nobody. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that the whole world, everybody might be saved. But see, they don't perceive God that way. Many of them see him up there with a baseball bat, and the minute you make a mistake, you're going to get it. So how can you approach a God like that? Well, I messed up this time, boy. I can hear the, I can hear, I can hear the bat. <laughs> Your imagination runs away with you. But see, if you see God as a loving Heavenly Father, and when you fall, He's the first one there to lift you up. Though you fall seven times, the righteous man falls seven times, God will lift him up. See, that's how we are to perceive people. When they fall, uh-huh, I knew it all along. <laughs> I told my wife you wouldn't last two weeks. When I got saved, I had people say, well, about three weeks, he'll be back to the bar. He'll be back drinking and carousing. Well, here I am, 81 years old. Been on the front line all these years. If God be for you, who can be against you? Let's say that again. God is for me. Say it. You perceive that. You know that. See, there's things in the Bible that we can know. These things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. First uh, John 5, 13. All right, let's move on with this teaching. All right, now, we see that, and I wish we could go and, and open it, but I think you all know that scripture, and you can read it at home and get the gist of that. They actually, were, listen, when you read that story, you know, they were, they were push, pushing him off the cliff. How many of you know that? Remember the story? P push it, and all of a sudden, he disappeared. He had the ability to change his appearance. Hello? And he just walked through the crowd, and they, it's like they either didn't see him or he was invisible or he changed his appearance. Satan can do that, you know. Hello, we won't go that way. Filled with rage. That is the religious spirit. Filled with rage. Well, we believe in the gifts of the spirit. Don't tell the Baptists that. They'll get filled with rage. Now, I'm not being mean. I shouldn't have said that. Forgive me, were you Baptist? Because I used to be in the Baptist church for 15 years. I was an evangelist. I never was a Baptist. I was a Christian. <laughs> anyway, my sense of humor is coming out. <clears throat> Pray for me. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about. Sometimes I don't want to tell people, they say, well, what denomination are you? And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I, I see if I say shield of faith, no, no. well, what denomination are you? Well, I'm Baptist. Yeah, I'm Baptist too. You said, Bob, isn't that, uh, no, Paul says, I become all things that I might win a few to Christ. If they think I'm Baptist, man, we're buddies. Uh, you, you, are we understanding that, Miss Keys, on that? You understand that? <laughs> are you? Huh? Bye. 
We, we go to the shield of faith. Shield of faith? Shield of faith? Is that an occult? When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and, my, and I come out of the Baptist church and my, a lot of my family, they were all Baptists and uh, Bob and Susan actually they in some type of cult. Well, I had to follow God. But you know what? They got saved. Many of them got filled with the Holy Ghost. They loved the Lord. They love us. We love them. God cleared it all up. But we were willing to whatever you say, I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. Because if I don't love you, oh, now, Bob, you're preaching. I am. How can I love God who I don't see? Come on, church. Don't shout me down tonight now. <laughs> So we get that clear. Okay, let's move on to uh, John one twelve. Okay, John one twelve. Saint John one twelve. We're gonna move faster. I hope. All right, there it is. But to as many as did receive. Now, who are that? Who are those many? Are right, us? And of course, you read that. Uh, <clears throat> basically, he's talking about uh, the Jewish people, but that principle goes over into the Gentile people, okay? But as many as did receive and welcome him back during that time when he was on the earth, he, God, gave what? The, 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 gave the authority, power, and privilege, and right to become the children of God, that is, to those who believe in, heave to, trust in, and rely on his name. Period. Now go to the next verse. Who owe their birth. Hmm. Let's, let's tear that apart a little bit. Who do we owe our birth to, our spiritual birth to? God. Yeah, God. Can you cause yourself to be born again? Who do you owe your physical birth to? Did you do anything to help that out? You came out hollering, didn't you? <laughs> Especially when it went, Pew! Ah! Oh, she's going to be an opera singer. Ah! She's like her mama, got a big mouth. Ah! <laughs> Back up, Bob. Okay. <laughs> I told my wife, now always honey, to keep up with your purse. <laughs> oh boy, we're gonna have fun tonight, Bob. <laughs> How many of you know I got a lot of grace? <laughs> See the way I'll do that. I said, "Where's your purse at, honey?" She said, "Well, rock." Huh, huh, huh. I put it under there. She'll hunt for it all night. <laughs> I just kid. <laughs> Where am I at? <laughs> all right. Who owe their birth neither to blood nor to the will of the flesh, talking about human beings, that of physical impulse, nor to the will of man, that of nature, the natural father, but to God. They are born of God. You had nothing to do with it. The Holy Spirit came in. I remember when I got saved, it's like, I can't explain it. It's like God just picked me up, and, and, and I come down the aisle, and it wasn't even an invitation. I mean, God just by his spirit, Bob, now we're going down the aisle, and you're going to get saved. I'm going to save you, boy. <laughs> and I come down that aisle, and the preacher looked at me. He was making some announcements. What do you want? I won't be saved. Uh, I'll be saved. Well, let's see. It's not on my, let's see. We've got to wait our invitation. Wait nothing. I want to be saved now. I mean, you understand that? When God moves, move with God. And I gave my life to Christ and been going ever since. Front line, never backed up. By God's grace and mercy, not bragging, but praising God. Because of Him, I live and move and have my being. Amen, and so do you. I reign and rule because He's given me the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness to reign in the millennium years. No. Now, that's right, now. You know, remember now? Now? Yeah, we used to be, but now we are children of God. We used to be 
dead in our trespasses, but now we are alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. But now, our name is written in the Lamb's book, but now we've been justified, but now we are being sanctified, but now we're full of the Holy Ghost, but now we are children of the... Our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Now we've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness, placed into the kingdom of the Son of God. Now I can go to the throne of God and cast all my cares upon Him. Now... I reign and rule in this life through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody say, now. now. Case closed. Case closed. Now, that don't mean at times you don't get tired. Uh, sometimes you'll get a little confusion. But remember, a lot of it is just in our souls. Man is spirit, soul, and body. When you've got troubles, does that mean you're lost? A loved one dies, does that mean you're lost? You lost your job. Does that mean you're lost? How many's ever lost their job? Let's see. That doesn't mean you're lost. You just lost a job. Yeah, you just lost a job. That's what she say. <laughs> That's good. Hallelujah. <coughs> All right. Now remember, we owe our birth to who? God. We owe our birth to who? God. God. We owe our birth to who? God. Right. Now, wait a minute. He chose you before the foundation of the world. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1 real quick, like. Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians. Let's start with uh, verse 4, okay? Put verse 4 up there. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. All right. Everybody there gets up on the board. Amplified. Even as in his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own. In Christ, and remember we've been studying about in Christ. Tonight, where are you at? In That's right. 24-7, we are in Christ. Who remembers the story that I told about being in the Air Force? You remember that? Okay, you remember that? When I was in the Air Force, they had the responsibility to take care of all my needs because I was in the Air Force. My medical, uh, they fed me three meals a day. And if that wasn't enough, I went out to Hardy's and got me a big one. How many still do that? Don't do that no more. I'll see. They, they, they furnished me with clothes. If I'd have stayed in for 30 years, I could have retired and had to be getting a check coming in because I was in the Air Force. All the blessings were mine in the Air Force. Now we are in Christ, and everything that's in Christ belongs to us. We're heirs of God, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. We're sons and daughters of the living God. All of our sins have been forgiven. He has the responsibility to take care of us. And he's very faithful in doing that. I thank God I belong to him because I cannot raise my body. Once they put my body in the ground, it ain't got no life in it. And if God don't raise me, there behold, I'll stay there. But he says, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken these mortal bodies one day while we're in the grave. And we're going up, and our spirit, man, is going to unite with our body and go back with the Lord. Is that what the Bible says? Sure, that's what the Bible says. But if I die right now, where would my spirit go? Be with Christ. Where's the Scripture? Back everything up with Scripture. 1 Corinthians, no, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. What is absent from the body when you die? Spirit. Man is spirit, soul, and body. So these bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So in God's plan, when the bodies wear out and they quit breathing, our spirit departs. Absent from the body, 
present with the Lord. Now, what are we going to do with this dead body? If we, if we keep it sitting there in the chair, it'll start stinking. So we get some of the men of the church, go out there and dig a hole, we take your body, throw it in there, cover it up, say a few nice words over you. And all of a sudden, one day, at the resurrection, those that are in Christ comes out of that grave Philippians, let's turn it to Philippians. Let's finish this, okay. Uh, then we'll turn to Philippians uh, 3, uh, 20, 21. Uh, notice this. Hims actually picked us out for himself. Say, I, I, I'm, I'm, I live for him. He's preeminent in my life. That means first place. See, that's very important that we make that commitment. Let's turn to something else, Bob. No, let's hang there for a while. I love for him to be first place in my life. I love it. Susan, I got some news for you. The day I made a commitment. Oh, what, what was it? You know, I used to say you were first place in my life. Well, yeah, I know I am. No, you're not. I'm not. No, you're not. Who's first place in your life? You got another woman? Who would have me? My God, who would have me, honey? You'd be surprised. No, Jesus is first place. Boy, you just have put yourself under the covering of God. He has full responsibility to take care of you. My body is his body. My life is his life. In fact, I live by his life. You do too. If you, if you acknowledge that, I live by the life of another. I live by the faith of another. Galatians 2.20. Let's finish this. In Christ, before the foundation of the world, when did he pick you out? Before the foundation of the world. Whoa, when was that? I don't know. Somewhere yonder way. <clears throat> that we should be holy, consecrated, set apart for him. Blameless in his sight, even above reproach, before him in love. Now, he did that for us. I am what I am by him. As he is in the world, so are we. See, we are in Christ. Okay, think about it. We are in Christ. Is Christ holy? Yes. Right, anything that's in him is what? Is, is Christ consecrated? Then whatever's in him is consecrated. Does he love the Father? Yes. Everything in him that loves the Father. We in him, we love the Father. Can you see that? He does it all for us. And we get the benefit of that as we get the right perspective of who we are now in Christ. Okay? All right, listen to this now. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 5. Ephesians 1, 5. Rick, thank you. For he foreordained us, destined us planned in love for us to be adopted revealed as his own children now take that personal some people read the bible and they, 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 they don't they don't apply it to themselves you got to apply it to yourself annie are you a child of god when did god choose you okay are you in christ are you filled with the holy spirit are you in Christ? You are victorious. Right now you are. You better stay in Christ too. Is Christ in you? Which is your only hope of glory. The only hope of heaven. Glory. Okay? On and on. See, we're in Christ. And you got to see, your perspective has to change now. See, God counts those things that be not as though they were. You got to see as God sees. How many of you know this is not our home down here? Turn to Philippians real quick, like Philippians, and we we'll, may come back to that. Philippians, where's that at? That's in the Bible, Philippians. There we go. Turn to Philippians chapter 3, all right, verse 20. I love verse 22. Let's start with 20. But we, now who is we? 
See, we got to identify who we is. We, that's us. For we are citizens of the state, commonwealth, homeland, which is in heaven. From it, also, we earnestly and patiently await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as Savior. All right, go to the next verse. So we see where our citizenship. Who will transform? When he comes, these bodies have not been transformed, but our spirits have been recreated at this point. In me, there is a recreated spirit. When I was lost, when I was in Adam, my spirit was dead. But when God put me in Christ, my spirit was recreated and became alive, and now I have fellowship with God the Father who is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in their spirit and in truth. So it's our recreated spirit that we worship God Almighty. That's why a person that's lost cannot worship God. He's dead in his trespasses. He has no relationship with God. And people you know out there that are still not Christians, they cannot see because the God of this world has blinded them from the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have you ever said, why don't they see? How can a blind man see? He can't. Because who has blinded him? Satan has blinded the unbeliever from the glorious light of the gospel. When the Apostle Paul was saved, boy, the light shone. I know we read this word and spirit is in it. But it, what we call revelation knowledge is like all of a sudden that you just, whoo, it comes alive. How many ever experienced that? It just, it just comes alive. So that's why we have to stay in it continuously. And little by little, these words will come alive. I've read these scriptures that I'm tonight. I know them by memory. I can see them in my mind. I go to sleep at night. I can see it all. I can preach this message at night when I'm sleeping. Susan says, please shut up. I've got to go to sleep. One more verse. <laughs> all right, who will transform? Who will transform our, our bodies when he comes? That's at the resurrection. At the resurrection. Notice the fashion anew the body of our humiliation, that's this body which is humiliated, uh, to conform to and be like the body of his glory. Our body will be just like the body of Jesus Christ. You tear that verse apart and you'll see that. All right. And majesty, by exerting that power which enabled him even to subject everything to himself. So we will be transformed, our, our bodies will, and our new spirits, We'll go into a new body, and we'll never die again. We'll live throughout eternities of eternities. We'll reign with Christ in the new millennium for 1,000 years when he comes back. All right, let's go back to Ephesians. Ephesians 1. One five, I'm sorry. Ephesians one five. For he foreordained us. Okay, go to go to uh, six, Rick. So that we might be to the praise and accommodation of his glorious grace, favor and mercy, which he so freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Now, as we grow and mature, and we are transformed into the image of God. That's what he's doing. These spirits of ours has to grow and mature and be transformed to grow and come into the image of the Son of God. Okay, and that's a process. This is called sanctification. You see this word here, sanctification? Right down here? That's a process. We don't have time to go. But he has begun a good work in us. And he will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. So that's a process of time. Do we understand that? That's what we're in now. All of us is in a process of what the Bible talks about, uh, sanctification. Okay. Now we have been sanctified, we are being sanctified, and we yet shall be sanctified as long as we live down here. We have to learn to overcome certain things. Now I'm going to share something about my own personal experience. Yesterday, 
Uh, my family is such where some of the kids work a certain time, they've all grown up, they go to school and everything, so we split our family. One, one part of the family comes on a certain day because of their jobs and all, and so we arrange that and another one another time, okay? <coughs> so, of course, Grandpa pays for the bill. Okay, now, I'm going to share something I'm, sh I'm sure that none of you. Now, remember, I'm being sanctified. I'm the pastor, and I'm being sanctified. People might look at me like, boy, he's perfect. Well, I am as far as God is concerned. But in my actions, in my feelings, sometimes I'm not perfect. How many understand that? You know what I mean? Okay. So, uh, they all order what they want. We all eat our food, whoopie dippy doo this is fun, you know. But my youngest daughter has a habit of picking up what she thinks is the finest restaurants that they are, <laughs> which have, that don't mind charging your, and taking your socks off, too. Why? <laughs> <coughs> and so, you know, of course, Granddad's going to pay for it all, so we'll order a double portion. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> none of y'all have experienced that, okay. Uh, now, Notice inside, Lord, if you've done a sanctifying work in me, we will soon find out, Bob, when they give you that bill. <laughs> and so they give me the bill. You know, you have your card there, and I give it to Tammy. She, she knows how to fill it out, and uh, I'm still eating some of Susan's food and mine. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so she fills it out, and she's so generous with my money. She gives a $40 tip. Yeah, how many of you know you signed a paper and all that? So it all came to, I think, $270. Okay. Oh, thank you, Grandpa. Now, <clears throat> of course, I'm cool, right? Inside. <laughs> now, I know I've been sanctified because it would have been, you ever heard of Tommy Bump go off? <laughs> you can check your life and see where you used to throw bricks and now you just throw little rocks <laughs> okay see there's a difference because God has sanctified me and then see I have the word in me and, it, and here's how God talks to me by the word what do you have Bob that I haven't given to you uh, well nothing really uh, where did you get the money uh, well, really, from you. Uh, but, but I worked for it. Yeah, but I gave you the strength to work for it. Well, yeah, that's right, Lord. Mm -hmm. So you learned to give. See, if you don't give in the Spirit, <laughs> let me see that again. How <laughs> many understand what I'm talking about? But if God has done that sanctifying work in you, your spirit is calm, you've got the best attitude in the world, and you know, what's another 270? I just bought my great-granddaughter a brand new bedroom suit for 1,000. So what's a, so you know, then, then two weeks ago, my granddaughter had her car broke down and I had to, I paid for it for another 1,000. I mean, what's 270? God is really, how many of you understand what I'm talking about? See, some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but that's all right. You grow, you live long enough, you will. I don't think, I, I really don't think I could afford any more grandchildren. <laughs> Please have no more children in my family. I, I, Grandpa cannot afford it. <laughs> but see, you have to... Remember, I reign and rule in this life. And you've got to rule over your own soul. Not over your husband or your wife, but over your own soul. You rule and reign. Okay? How many of you know when you first get a report, your, your, your reaction is much stronger? I mean, it, to start with, it's like you start pulling hair out, you know. <laughs> I can't afford any of that, so I don't do that no more. I can <laughs> eat my nails, okay. <clears throat> You'll have to forgive my sense of humor. They're, they're all praying for me, okay. Uh, 
That's sanctification. God does a sanctifying work in you. He does it. You can't do it. You will literally fall apart with a nervous breakdown. This is why people fall down with nervous breaks down because they not, have not learned to trust the Holy Spirit, lean on Him to do the work. God, you said it was you working in me, making me willing to do your, your good pleasure. Lord, if you don't work in me, I'll just be an old grouch at 89 years old. Nobody in the church will stand, be able to put up with me. Every time they look at me, I'll growl. What's wrong with Pastor Bob? He didn't allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in him. Oh, I'm not talking about my justification. I'm just, just, I'm justified, but I'm in the process of being sanctified. Now, of course, you girls that have women that have kids, I mean, you just got that to the tulips. Huh? Huh? Oh, through the tulips. They're tearing the living room up. Oh, that's all right. We still got the bedroom to lock up tonight. Just leave all the toys piled up. It doesn't matter. And they're running through the house, you know, singing, swinging on your favorite chandelier. God, do something in them, Lord. <laughs> but see, if you don't let God do that work in me, you will not know how to handle that. You will come apart real quick. Quiet in here. Is that not true? Is that, say, so what? Romans 5, 17. God has given us grace and the abundance of, of grace and the gift of righteousness to reign in this life through Christ Jesus. We know who we are. We're justified. Our fight should not be with God no more. We should be able to relax in it all and know that God's working in me. Now, I know God's working in me because I remember how I used to be, but now because God is doing something and has done something into me, I love that little picture that Rick on the stones I'm going to use that one day, but not with stones. I'm going to pick up cement blocks. Boop. <laughs> Boop. I mean, remember that? Remember that, Rick? That was good. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm going to get cement blocks. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful now that God has done that work and we don't get offended anymore? Huh? <laughs> Look at we, we don't get offended no more, do we? You know, it's the easiest thing in the world to get offended, isn't it? It's so easy because that's the way we're made with the old Adam. But as you let God do the work in you, you don't allow yourself to get offended anymore. What difference does it make another 100 years from now? How about 50 years from now? You think next year I'll think about that $270? Because between then and, and now and then, it'll probably be a five and six hundred, eight hundred, <laughs> another thousand. I said, Lord, just keep it coming in where I can put it out. But you see, that's the main thing that we need to be upon. His life flows in. Our life flows out with his life to others. Flows in, flows out. Flows in, flows out. Show mercy. Mercy's flowed into me, so I'll let it flow out to you. Forgiveness has flowed into me, and so I let it flow out to you and everybody else. You remember when you used to have a dog? I remember Rick talking about the dog's situation. How many used to take their droppings and throw back in their yard? Y'all haven't done that? You haven't done that? My goodness. How many of you ever had a dog next day? You have well, some of you have not lived but with somebody right beside, and that dog all night. Huh? How many of you ever had that? That will that will make your hair fall out. That will <laughs> you think all kind of things. You plan all kind of plans that you're gonna get that dog. But you gotta be smart and make sure that you get the dog and remove him from the scene without being accused of it. 
But see, those are the plots in our brains. Don't, come on, you know what I'm talking about. But see, you've got to cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the Word of God and bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. Yeah, puppy, puppy, puppy. You got any more of that uh, rat poison? <laughs> yeah, puppy, puppy, puppy. <laughs> That's life, isn't it? But aren't you glad you're free tonight? Aren't you glad you love the Lord? Aren't you glad the Lord loves you? God bless you. We didn't get to finish it, but we'll continue on. The story goes on.